Hi everyone, now this is the last in the series of flies from Kingsmill Moor, uh, the Bumble Patterns. And this is one one of the ones I haven't tied before, it's called the Magenta and Gold Bumble. Uh, it's quite an unusual fly. <laughs> the materials you need, for the tail you need, uh, according to this, orange toucan. Now, not many orange toucans flying about Scotland, so... Uh, I need to put some sort of sub. I know what toucan looks like. Um, normally it's used a lot in uh, classic salmon flies and it's quite a bright. They use the yellow one, the yellow feather. Um, this is not it, but this is kind of like, this is a golden pheasant crest, but it's, it's one of the the feathers from the base of the, when I've dyed the crest. In this case I dyed it sunburst. Uh, these shorter feathers here are very toucan like, these ones. So I'm considering using the, the last one I'm going to use. Uh, you could add, you could use a dyed orange version. <coughs> I mean there's lots of things you could actually do. It's basically up to yourself. But the other uh, unusual feather for the fly is the front hackle. Now it's a, it's a pink cinnamon hackle from the wing of a land rail. Now I'm sure there's land rails in Scotland, but again, not very... They're not easily gotten. So again, I'll, I'm going to use a sub. Now, I will put a picture up of the wing. Now, I'll put it up just now, and you'll be able to see it. Now, as I can, it's a type of brown, like a natural brown, hen brown, if you want to call it. Uh, so, you could easily use a hen cape. So, I'll show you the, there's, a, there's a hen cape here. Nice, rich, ready colour that could probably, could easily use a, as a sub. Uh, here we've got, these are just side feathers which you'd find on a golden pheasant skin, these are basically below the tail where the tail would be and these again have got a nice rich but they're very soft. Uh, I'm going to try, I'm going to use this one because it's got the same sort of texture as you would find if you were using wings, same sort of idea, of, same sort of fibre. I mean there's, if you go through there will be, you'll find something like Anyway, we'll give it a go. Now I'm going to be using the yellow thread first. I'm going to finish off with a black, but the yellow thread is because it's a gold body. Now on the way down we tie in some wire just to basically protect it now. Just a small gold wire. Just wind this to the back of the hook. It's all the way down. Now I have waxed the thread so it's plenty of grip. And again I'll wax it just at the back. They tie in the tail. Now these, as I say, these are these wee short feathers. You could, they've, they've got a bit of warmth, obviously, because I've dyed it sunburst. So it's not exactly orange, but it's not far. It's an orangey yellow, which would probably suit the fly. As I say, you could easily warm it up a wee bit orange. But we'll probably do that. I'll just, you know, what I'll, I'll put it on. I'll just pinch, pinch it on. See what it's like. It'll certainly work as a colour combination, orange yellow. Check my length, in case I went crazy here. Pull it in. You can see the top tail is a wee bit shorter. Just looking at this side here. Just making sure the fibre's on top. I'm going to trim this, the length of the body, which is probably to this point, just about two head lengths away from the eye. Now what I'm actually going to do here, I'm actually, because I've did that, I'm going to tidy up. As I say, I've not tied this fly before, so... I'm just using my own sort of ideas. I mean, it's what you've got to do with a lot of the especially the old flies. If I want to tie with the original materials, uh, not so much the toque inside, uh, but the... Land rail, I'll be looking for taxidermy birds. It's a good way of finding feathers. Uh, and obviously, don't buy the best, just buy the rough birds, and there's plenty of them, especially from the Victorian area. So, now it's a gold oval tinsel for the, the body. So, this is a, a medium. I'm going to bear the fibre and catch it right in at the point where it's starting to twist loose. It's sort of like a neater start when you do that and it makes it slightly 
No, it's bulky. Just encouraging the the waist to sit. I don't want to trim it too short. I mean, if I trim it, trim it the length of the body, it makes it easier to get a nice flat body with the tinsel. Trim that away. Again, I'm going to wax my thread and bring the rib up. Now, it does give you a good start, but just be careful where it starts so you can. See there, that's fine. And then we wind up. Now, you could just use a flat tinsel for this body. You don't have to use an oval tinsel, it's quite expensive to actually do that. Catch this on. Make sure there's a good half dozen turns there. Trim that away. Then just obviously fluff that out so it gets a taper, it gets basically tidies it up. I'm going to change to, now you could either use a red would be a good colour with this fly, but I'm going to use a black thread. Just a uni black. It's a uni yellow I was using there. Trim that away. Magenta. This is a magenta cape. You can go stronger, darker if you if you want. This is as a modern uh, dye. It's been used here, so it is quite quite strong. I'm not sure what an, uh, an old magenta would look like. Just the one feather on this. No, I attempted to use another one as well, just to slightly get the thickness. I may do that. Just the bumble is a heavy dress fly, so I'm going to double up on the feathers. So I've got two here. You could mix them, you could put a brown through it. Uh, lots of things you could do, but it is just, it says magenta and that's it. So I'm just going to make sure these the tips are lined up. Trim. That's a, that, that cape I'm using there is a, a Chinese, it's not the best, but it's still good enough to use for this. I actually dyed that for doing dabblers and some salmon flies. Now I'm going to use this wee a cable a connector. Just to, it's easier to grab two hackles with it rather than just the normal pair of hackle pliers. Just wind down. First I'm going to come round with a turn with the wire at the back. Just follow up with the, the wire, come round with that last turn. And then work your way up through with the wire which will protect it. I'm just going to remove this. Follow up with your thread, put a 90 degree bend into the wire. And what that does, that locks it in, that locks it back. Yeah, the, the turns you did up the body then becomes, well not slip back. And then you can bend and break away. Normally I would just nick these off. Sometimes you get an ether cut when you do that. Now I said I'm going to use this, these, these are natural feathers. I've got the same sort of type of fibre. This is off a golden pheasant. We'll see how it looks. Uh, it's a nice soft fibre. Saying that with bumbles, you're not always looking for the softest fibre because you want a good, uh, a good feather, a good sometimes a stiff feather, so you get a nice wake coming off the fly. And what a look at this some more. There's a wee bit sparse these. I'm not sure how these are going to wind. Uh, as I say, it's the first time doing using this, so let's, let's have a go. Now I'm actually going to double up on it. I'm not going to use a single one. I'm going to use two. Just to get a wee bit of thickness. So I'm going to do much like I did, but the opposite way around in the body hackles. As I say, the bumble patterns are are meant to be quite, quite, it's quite bushy. So I'm just using my hackle pliers to bring, so I can locate the tips of the feathers. Once I do that, just trim them so I'm leave enough to tie it on. Catch that on, just 
make sure there's wax on the thread just come down towards the eye in this case I will be able to hold just two, two feathers together should be anyway with the, the normal pliers just work towards the eye going to get maybe three turns out of this I say a single feather may have done well, but I just thought they were a wee bit sparse. Now once you've caught these in, I'm actually going to trim the stems away because they are reasonably thick. Sometimes I fold them back, but they were just a wee bit heavy. And then just build up a wee head. Keep the thread tight, make sure you have a finish. Turn away. Let's see what it's like. Uh, that feather certainly gives it a nice, a nice look. Try this side. Well, there we are, folks. That's uh, that's that. That's uh, the magenta, or the magenta and gold bumble that I've. Well, it has to be a variant because I don't have land rail and I don't have token, so anyway, we can only give it a go and use what we have. That's what fly tying is all about. And there we go. Nice looking fly though. I would say probably more suited for, for salmon colour combination with this. Um, I'm sure the trout will take it in really dark water. Uh, Fishing, the, uh, some say off the deeps. <laughs> when you're fishing off a of Daphnia, well, fish feeding Daphnia, this type of colour sometimes works. Anyway, it's up to yourself. I mean, even sea trout would probably have a go at this. Uh, but it's a nice pattern. So, anyway, as I say, the final one in the set of seven flies from the Kingsmill Moor. Uh, I will be putting the set together. Um, so, I'll probably take a picture. Maybe use it in the thumbnail at the beginning so you can see all the flies together. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that and again I hope you enjoyed the series of flies and thank you for watching.